Hello everybody, I'm Jimmy Fantastic and this is my Vampire Guide. So, it's a first guide for a while. I am going to have a run with uh, Pro Tips Vamps after this. And uh, yeah, let's get into it. What, let's see what Cyanide says. They say vampires are strong and agile. They are. Um, they're a bit slow, that's the only bad thing, but vampires are unbelievably good players. Hypnotic gaze can get you out of tricky situations. It is not... Hmm. It can get your opponent into tricky situations is is more what it is. They're brilliant at you know breaking cages. That's that's the best thing about vampires really. And thralls are inexpensive. Um yes, they are. They are like hobgoblins, basically identical to hobgoblins. Weaknesses says few vampires early on. Few vampires in general, actually. A lot of uh, people on Fumble, you know, max out at four vampires. Um, so you know you can stay at four. Some people go to five. I, hardly anybody goes to six. Um, I've seen some coaches on Fumble go to. Th I think King Van. I think he won a major with five vampires, and I think Tara Barala goes to six vampires. But a lot go to four as well. Um, blood tus bloodlust and a violent opponent make a bad cocktail for your thralls. Yes, this is the bloodlust is a killer. It's a horrific, horrific skill to have. Um, and yeah, you know, vampires suffer more than usual amount of those games where you get cast off the pitch and can't do anything. The good thing for vampires is if they've got a few vampires, they can still, you know, like elves, if they've got a few vampires on the pitch, they can cause problems to, to bash teams. And losing a seasoned vampire can prove troublesome. It can, but they are the most durable players in the game, having apothecary and regen and you never want it into apothecary a thrall so they're basically the most durable players in the game um so you know it's not really a weakness is it but there you go um so yeah they're a funny old team you know they're, they're really bad at low tv uh they're tricky for 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 beginners to use because of the bloodlust uh you know make, making sure you play around it a bit um but at high TV, they can be quite devastating. You know, the the, the cage breaking potential once they get stats on the vampires is crazy. Um, uh, they suffer a bit against elves at high TV, but you know, they're, they're interesting. In tabletop, they're generally a way to get Cheney in the mix. Wilhelm Cheney can get, but then you could get him with um, with Norse as well. So really, I, I, funny enough, I've played Pete W on tabletop. Uh, and he had vampires, and he did it to get Cheney in because they had a good skill package and stuff. But they're going to generally need a really good skill package and Cheney to be worthwhile in, in like, NAF-style um, events. And, uh, yeah, in, in, like, a scheduled league, yeah, you know, they can get high TV. They're good against Bash. I mean, they're good at winning against Bash, and they're, they can do okay against Elves. But the thing is, because their biggest strength is cage-breaking, and Elves don't really need cages to win... They kind of suffer. Elves are just better elves than vampires because they've got the speed and they don't have crap linemen. Right, so let's make a team and look at the players. Um, lots of teas. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, right. There's. I uh, should have done B for blood, shouldn't I? Okay, so there's only two types of player on the team there is vampires and thralls. Um, thralls are hobgoblins, essentially. They're six three three seven. They've got general skills. Um, some people like to take kick early on one of them because you know, combined with vampire's cage breaking ability, having a kick player can be good. Obviously, you can take dirty player on them to foul people. You, you know, you generally want a lot of a lot of thralls because you're going to be eating them yourself. And then if you don't eat them, they can foul to remove themselves that way. Uh, block wrestle, obviously. Um, find things wrestle to create more holes for the vampires is generally preferred over block though I would tend to get block low TV and then wrestle higher as, as I as I generally do um, yeah tackle you could take leader on a double a lot of people do that you could take guard of course because it's brilliant you could take dodge to try and keep them alive but you know generally like block block wrestle tackle kick dirty player those kinds of skills generic lineman skills you know nothing special 40k for a for a rubbish player, <laughs> it's, it's okay. But the big one is zero out of six vampires, and you know they're they're 110k, which is which is cheap, but it's because they've got bloodlust. And six four four eight is obviously a, a good stat line, not a great stat line, and I guess it's because of the armor eight and obviously claw. They're really susceptible to getting to getting clawed off the pitch. That's the big one. 
Um, but you know, especially at high TV, the, the armor raid becomes very scary. You know, people are going to gun for them, they're going to foul them. And yeah, they can regen, and yeah, you can use an apple on them, but um, I think the armor rate is a big weakness. And the movement six is also a big weakness because, you know, you really want them to be movement seven. Um, so as you can see, they have general agility and strength access. Cooking with gas, some people say, general agility strength, GES. And that's obviously tremendous skill access. Um, so yeah, they're really good players, but let's have a look in case you don't know what they are. Regeneration, you should know. Um, Four plus they ignore casualties. You've got to choose to use the apothecary before you roll for regen, though. No? Uh, hypnotic gaze is very, very powerful. You can use it at the end of a move action. A lot of people I see playing vampires and they don't hypnotic gaze at every opportunity. You should always be thinking about if you can hypnotic gaze at the end of your move. And, you know, maybe, maybe base somebody that you wouldn't normally base just because you get the free chance of the gaze at them. And yeah, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a flat agility roll with minuses for, for people kind of defensive assists to the gaze. And yeah, you lose your tackle zone and can't catch intercept pass or assist with the block. And uh, or move voluntarily um, until you activate them. So, you know, it, it, they can be really good because you can, you can obviously, the obvious application is is hypnotic gazing somebody the uh, like a cage corner and getting two dice on the ball. That's the easy way. Uh, the easy thing, but there's lots of other things that it can mean that you know just the fact that you've got to activate a player it can it can it, you can use it more subtly than just the cracking a cage. It is it's a very I mean a tremendously good skill, and obviously strength four and agility four is also tremendously good. So you know they've got so many advantages, but here's here's the bad here's the bad disadvantage. Every time you declare an action on a one, they've got to feed on a thrall teammate. Or a spectator. So, um, and it, it, it does it right here, yeah. At the end of the declared action, but before actually passing, handing off, or scoring, the vampire must feed. You either choose an adjacent thrall and you just make an injury roll for them. And if you can't, if you can't, you know, end your move adjacent to a thrall, then you've just got to run off the pitch and bite a spectator. Um, it should be said if you declare a block, you can then change it to a move. Um, if you bloodlust, which I don't think it says there, but you can do. But, you know, it's terrible. You end up injuring all your own players. On defense, you can you usually end up with a thrall stun, so, you, you know, your vampires can go on. You, if, you, if you're biting stun players, it's not so bad, but you can easily just knock out half your team and cast half your team and stuff. Uh, you know, it can be terrible. A lot of beginners will, will re-roll bloodlusts, but really... With only four, with only four rerolls, you, as you're usually going to have, you can't really afford to reroll the bloodlusts. You've got to basically, you know, live with the bloodlusts, and you know, save the reroll for like a dodge or a block or whatever. Um, the killer is scoring. You know, you can make a move action in the end zone and then not score. So you're always going to want to have like a thrall adjacent to the end end zone, so that if you fail bloodlust, you can go in and do it. And obviously, the fact that you don't get the score if you fail bloodlust means that you absolutely have to uh, re-roll it if there's no thrall to bite you know and it's to score a touchdown you're going to have to then um, so yeah absolutely huge 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 disadvantage bloodlust but hypnotic gaze in the stat line is you know really good and as for skills block and dodge are obvious I would start every single vampire with block and dodge probably one block to blitz with and then the rest dodge to move around because obviously being mobile is good and at low TV people aren't going to have as much tackle and then combined with strength 4 it's going to be really hard to knock you over and then and then after you've got block and dodge then you could take tackle uh, tackle pro a lot of people like pro and vampires I wouldn't take it first but I would I could see me taking it after block and dodge but never before block and dodge pro you know if some people love it some people don't like it so much the problem with pro in normal teams is you, you know, if it's important, you want to use a team reroll. Well, the good thing about vampires is hypnotic gaze is rarely crucial, very rarely crucial. Bloodlust is very rarely crucial as well. Both of those are, are things you can use pro on every time you activate them nearly. And then, you know, if you're one of those people who likes to uh, greed reroll blocks, you can greed reroll blocks. But, you know, I don't like that sort of thing. But, you know, you could. And then guard is obviously a good one. They don't need it that much, actually, funnily enough, because, the, you know, they rely on the, the hypnotic gaze and stuff. 
Uh, you obviously want a mighty blow tackle guy on the team, maybe piling on as well, seeing as you can get that on normals. Some I've seen people take pass on doubles. You really don't need, yeah, you know, doubles. You, you know, that's it's a waste. You're getting general agility and strength on normal. Stand firm's a good one or sidestep. You know, you've got so there's so many ways you can build them. You can. You know, stand firm's annoying, but then sidestep can be super annoying. So sometimes sidestep's more annoying than stand firm, isn't it? So yeah. Oh, I forgot the stat ups for the thralls. Oh well, stat ups for vampires, obviously movement. All the all the stats are great because they only need block dodge. Uh, one of the best vampires ever on fumble is Debog. And he only has block and dodges his only two skills, and then he has he has plus movement, plus two strength, and plus agility. And uh, yeah, you know that that's a pretty much a perfect vampire, isn't it? Any stats you take, not armor, but you know you want them faster because movement six is is a bit bad. You want them stronger because being strong is amazing, and you want them more agile because that's also amazing, especially with hypnotic gaze. Making that a two plus is obviously incredible. And yeah, vampires are amazing. And the hell of a player. The problem is you've only got four or five, or maybe six, and if they get removed, you're really going to struggle. But um, yeah, yeah, I'll mention the thralls now, even though it's out of se sequence. Um, I could see you not taking strength on a thrall and going guard, but I think you probably would take strength on a thrall. There's another vampire, more strength on the pitch. I'd take agility. I probably would forego movement or armor on a thrall. Just get block and stuff. Uh, but strength and agility is good on them to give you more strength and more agility. Right, so let's have a look at um, at the teams that I've made. So this is this is the one that you kind of recommend to new players, which is three vampires. This is a lot of people recommend three vampires to start. You know, people who are new to vampires, or I mean, if you're new to Blood Bowl, you probably shouldn't be playing vampires. Because uh, you know, then they're really not good at they're really not good at low TV, and they're they're always frustrating and hard to deal with and stuff. Um, you get four re rolls, three vampires, seven thralls, and you've got seventy k left. So you could go for five re rolls, which seems really excessive to me, or you could get the apothecary, start with the apothecary, and then build a bench later, or you could just start with a bench. Um, I mean, seeing as you probably don't know apothecary or thrall, and the vampires have got regen, maybe starting with twelve would be better. Or maybe people start with five. I don't really know what they do when they make this team. I don't like it because what I like is starting with four vampires. You get four vampires, and that's it. It works out perfectly. Four rerolls is all I ever want. I would never go. I would personally would never have five rerolls on vampires. You can get the apothecary. You can use journeyman after the first game if anyone dies. You can get the apothecary. Then you can build up all your reserves and eventually maybe get a fifth vampire and. Uh, yeah, I think I think obviously the fact that there's there's a limited amount of uh, positionals makes it quite easy to build a team. I think you know I could see how you might only want three vampires, but really, I think it's better to take four and you know have a more powerful team and learn how learn how to use them. Really, you know, there's no need to limit yourself to three. But I, I know some people do, and that's okay. If that's what you want to do. You kind of had to have three in Living Rubric Four when you needed Fan Factor. Now that you don't need Fan Factor, I I think it's it's silly not to have four vampires. But if you want to go with three because you're scared, you know that's okay. I mean they are they, it is scary that every time you activate them they can eat your own players and stuff. And you know, but then if you don't, you've got a six three three seven player that doesn't really do much of anything. So, so you know, I think the power is in your vampires, and the more vampires you've got, the more chances you've got, <laughs> basically. So yeah, I would I would recommend starting with four vampires, even if you're a beginner, because well, maybe if you're not new to Blood Bowl, but if you're a beginner with vampires, I reckon four, and then sink or swim, you know, and then if you sink, you can work out what to do. So there you go. That's that's the vampire guide. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and stay fantastic.